Hey, it's Ominous Prime here, and today we're going to talk about Tunic. It's a game that I just recently uh, completed on Game Pass. Uh, it was just recently featured on um, Idea Xbox, and on the same day at Shadow Drop. I remember hearing something about it a few years back is what I want to say, and I kind of lost track of it. It being showcased there was what brought my attention back to it. I was like, oh yeah, I want to go ahead and play that. And I had been playing Elden Ring, and I was uh, also playing Triangle Strategy from the Nintendo Switch. I was like, I need something different. I, I really love this game. This game is amazing. And I want to go ahead and give credit to the team. I probably mispronounced some of their names, so I do apologize to those that made the game if I got your name wrong. Uh, to start with, the lead developer for this game is Andrew Schuldis, or it could be Schuldice. We also have the level artist Eric Billingsley. The producer was Felix Kramer. And then we have the director who's from Finchie who published the game, Adam Saltzman. And we have the CEO from Fringy, uh, Rebecca Saltzman. And um, we also have audio that was put together by um, Power Up Audio. And then the composer um, is Life Formed. Now this is the first game that I've played that was put together by Fringy. And I have to say it's quite enjoyable. I may go back and check out some of the other titles that they've produced. So. Uh, let's talk about what I found with Tunic here. First thing that happens is as soon as you start the game, you end up on the beach. You have no instructions. You're a fox, you're in a green tunic, but what's there is reminiscent of two games that came to mind. First one was Legend of Zelda's Link's Awakening on the Nintendo Switch, which was the updated 3D version, which had an isometric view. The art style is a little bit different between the two. There's a lot more detail, I would say, in the uh, Link's Awakening game, but you had um, the same kind of look or the same kind of feel, because in that game, you also wake up on a beach and you got to figure out what to do next and that kind of gave me a clue on what to do here in Tunic. The other game that this reminded me of was Star Tropics released in 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's actually playable on the Nintendo Switch right now so I would recommend actually playing both. Both are excellent games on the Nintendo Switch. Star Tropics, right? You're on an island. You collect items and there's clues that are not where you would think to find them. In fact, there's one that's actually, it's like a map, I believe it was. It's been a long time since I played it because they did come out in 1990. But what you had to do was you had to put this piece of paper in water. While it was wet, I believe, you could see a clue um, that you needed in order to complete the game. The problem was a lot of people, for at least for Star Tropics, like if you rented the game, you didn't have a way of beating the game because oftentimes the manuals were missing you know when you were running games from like mom and pop stores like i was you know if you had purchased the game used and you didn't have that as part of it unfortunately uh, you didn't have the internet back then to go ahead and look up how to get through it so those two games were what really reminded me of the nostalgia of uh, adventure games you start off on the beach and going back to tunic here you don't have anything and you don't have a clue of what to do you're on a beach and the only way to go is to go up there's like this uh, yellow square on the ground you don't know what that means first thing i was like i need to find a weapon because i don't have anything the signs that you find are in a language that the best way i can put it is runic so it's not in any it's known language to me I didn't have a lot of direction on what to do, so I was thinking, hmm, what'd they do in Zelda? So in Zelda, you know, you go forward, there's a doorway, and you go through there, right? And there's an old man who goes, it's dangerous to go alone. So you grab a wooden sword, and now you have something to use to protect yourself or to defend yourself. So I was like, it's gotta be something like that here. And there was, there was a doorway and inside, there's a treasure chest. Ah, here we go. Open the treasure chest and I got a stick. So I was thinking, hmm, I need to find a sword. Uh, that wasn't the next thing to do though. Uh, the next thing I came across was a locked door. So I walked around until I could find a key while uh, taking out the enemies I could with my stick. While you're holding the left trigger, sometimes your 
not necessarily targeting what you want to do. So you got to be uh, uh, aware of what you're aiming at while you're doing that. You can get overwhelmed pretty quickly when they have a lot of enemies on the screen. And there's other objects, depending on the items that you have, you may be targeting. Once I got the, the key to go through the door, pass by a wall, it's got a bunch of lines on there. Don't know what that means yet. <laughs> and then uh, you go forward, come out the other side, and then that's kind of what draws you in, right? You want to explore, you want to see what's going on. And every time you hit an obstacle, you're like, how do I get past that one? That's the, the beauty of this kind of game. I wanted to find out what happened. And then, then I died. <laughs> uh, it'll happen. It'll happen to you. You know, normally in these types of games, you know, you're like, well, I die. I'll go back to some other checkpoint and start from there, right? In this game, it's very similar to um, what you would find as bonfires in Dark Souls. See, I'm not talking about Elden Ring. As you're coming through, you'll find these fox statues that have like a flame. And that's how you know that they're active. Um, you go there um, and you essentially are like kneeling down and like prayer to it. And that um, anything that you've killed in the area, it gets reset. In this particular case, that didn't happen on the first time. First time it threw me into like this um, out of body experience. And I'm not gonna spoil anything that goes on with the story. What I will say though, I'm just gonna give you a clue. The good ending comes when you can piece together in the right order all the pages you've collected. And the manual is where you're gonna find the story of the game. Because again, you're not able to read anything. There are other characters that you'll run into. I don't know their names because I couldn't read anything. It's all going to be played out in that runic language that I was telling you about. Every now and then there are some words that will appear in English. It's like your fox knows like maybe a word or two of the language. So uh, the way I could uh, explain it to you is like if you've ever been to a foreign country, you just walk up in there and you're looking at the signs and uh, it's not anything to do with your native language. And you're just like, I'll just listen to the words that sound familiar to me. And so that you try to use that to try and get around. And you'll find that if you've ever had this experience of going to another country, that is, it's not as helpful as you think it is. You know, you might be thinking you're getting around, but <laughs> if you don't have context, it doesn't help you. And that's what happens in this game is, you need to find the context of what's being presented to you. And a lot of that is through the game manual. It's important to go ahead and analyze the pages on there. Yes, it'll explain bit by bit because you don't get them in order as you're going around. You, you know, use a Shrek reference, it like peels away a layer of the onion, you know, or how to use your items or how to access some things that you wish you would have known back when you were in an area so you didn't have to necessarily go back there but it's like an aha moment so you kind of appreciate that because you feel like you earned that information there is a, a, a bit of difficulty to the game fortunately i've been gaming since like the early 80s this is what i love about this game is it makes me feel like it's not meant to punish you it's showing you how to play the game in order to win the challenge here is just figuring out the clues on what to do next. And I love this game for it. I can't believe such a small team was able to put a game like this together. This game right now for me, for the different games I played this year, this is actually a front runner for a game of the year for me. And I don't know, I just, I just really loved how this game was. I don't believe there's a physical copy of the game available yet. Even though I got to play it through my Game Pass subscription, I, I like it that much that I would pick it up if I can get a physical copy of it. Because you never know, sometimes these games, you know, they get rotated out of the Game Pass. And yeah, it's definitely a recommend for me. Let me know what you thought of the game. Uh, put it in the comments below. You know, let's have a good conversation about it. And I'll see you all next time. I'll be back with more reviews as I'm going through it.